Hi, this is Alex Damon with UnderEarthStudios.com. Uh, welcome to our first video tutorial. Today I'm going to teach you how to make an energy blast like the one seen in Dragon Ball Z. Uh, your end product should look something a little like this. There you go. So let's go ahead and get started. First thing you want to do is take your footage and drag it out into the composition window. This will create a new composition. You can see it right here. I'm going to rename it Blast. Okay. Uh, with your composition selected, go up to Layer, New, Solid. Uh, it should be a white solid. Let's name it Blast as well. And the width should be uh, bigger than your composition. I suggest about a thousand. Uh, so let's make that mass. You can see it's much wider than the composition for a good reason. Uh, next, we need to make an elliptical mask. So go up here. Uh, if you don't see the elliptical mask, just hold down on your mouse and this little menu will pop up. Choose the elliptical mask. Hold shift, click and drag, and now you have a nice white mask there. Perfect circle. Okay, select your solid down here, and on your keyboard press T, hold shift, hit P, M, and S. That will bring up your properties for mask shape, position, scale, and opacity, all of which we're going to be setting keyframes for and animating uh, your white solid. So, let's go forward in time to where uh, your solid should first be visible, right about here for me. Uh, and we're going to take that over there and just resize it. Should be pretty good. And then go ahead and click these stopwatches next to all your properties. That will turn keyframes on. You can see your keyframes right there. So now I'm going to go backwards in time to maybe where we don't want to see this thing anymore. Right in here. I'm going to turn the opacity to zero. So now it's not even visible anymore. And I'm also going to take the scale and make it almost non existent. So now you can see that we have this animation. And it's not perfect. Probably have to fix up the position mostly when you're animating these things. But there you go. Now I'm going to go forward and just set position keyframes because my hands move around, but it's going to take a lot of time, so I'm just going to kind of skip through it in fast motion. Here we go. Okay, that's about as far as I want to take it, and at this point I'm also going to add another keyframe for scale. Uh, to add another keyframe for something, you just click this little diamond here. And I'll add another one because I'm getting ready to shoot this thing out and I want the scale to be the same up until this point. So moving forward in time again, I'm going to go right there. And that is where the blast should really be taking off. So I'm going to go ahead and make this pretty dang big. Alright. And see that this isn't perfect at all. So again, I'm going to have to fix this up. Alright. So that's not bad at all. Um just go through in time once again and make sure that the energy blast is meeting with my hands at all times last frame there we go now before you do anything else select your blast hit control D to duplicate it and then poke this little eye we don't want to see it but we're going to need it later so select your first solid again and this is where things start to get a little tricky uh, 
right about here, we're going to set a keyframe for mask shape. We want it to be a perfect circle up until this point. So go forward one frame and zoom in on it. Okay. With the pen tool, we're going to add three points to this thing that will help us animate uh, the beam coming out of the core. So add one point here near the top, add another point at about the same place on the bottom, and then add a third point right next to this rightmost point here. Now, what we're going to do is select the two rightmost points and just drag them off the screen. Okay. Now, just kind of play around with all your points and these things coming off of them. And we just want to make this blast look good. That looks okay to me. I'm gonna drag these points out a little bit, make it a little rounder. That's better. Okay. Uh, but the problem is, it just goes from that to that. So what we're going to do is grab this keyframe and just pull it out and pull this one out until it looks somewhat fluid. Drag that out a little more. Between seven and ten frames usually looks pretty good. Okay, now you have your basic blast. Uh, it's probably the hardest part, is animating the mask shape so it looks nice and fluid. So, the next step is to give this bad boy some color. So, select your blast layer here, your first one, go to Effect, Trap Code, Shine. This is the easiest way to add color. Uh, it's not the only way though, if you don't have this awesome plugin. Uh, let's go to Colorize, and I use electric, I guess that's kind of blue, it's the classic energy blast color, so that's what I use. But you can use whatever you want, I don't care. Uh, okay. So now you are done with this layer. So let's poke the eye back on uh, for your second blast and we'll rename it Aura. I don't know what else to call it. So we're gonna add a buttload of effects to this layer and it really slows my computer down. Hopefully it won't do it to yours that bad, but let's get started. Uh, the first thing we want to do is go to Noise and Grain, Effect, Noise and Grain, Fractal Noise. Okay. Uh, turn it on linear. We're going to take the contrast up to about 900 and take the brightness down to negative 100 or so. Uh, on this overflow you want it to wrap back. Okay, so now you got this weird thing going on. You know what it is. Uh, go to your first frame in the composition and go to evolution op options. Uh, check cycle evolution and for cycles in a revolution, let's put 5. Okay. Uh, click the stopwatch next to evolution here. And go to your last frame. And put 5 in there. So at your first frame, you should have 0. Your last frame should be 5. Uh, the number here should always match the number here. So what that does is it kind of just animates this noise. Uh, but really it doesn't look like much at all. So we're going to fix that. Go to Effect, Blur and Sharpen, 
radial blur. Uh, we don't want it to be spin, we want it to be zoom. Okay. Uh, the center should be back here behind your blast. And then let's bump that up to like 150. Okay. So now you kind of see what I'm doing here. And I'm going to go ahead and. set some keyframes for the center just because I don't want it to be to the left of it all the time uh, should be more in the center so before I'm shooting it I have it in the center and then as I'm shooting it it's to the left. Okay? So that's pretty cool. Uh, but it needs some color. So go to Effect, Color Correction, Hue and Saturation. Uh, check this little colorize box. Let's bump the saturation up to about 50. And then you drag the degrees until you get a color that matches what you have. So I'm going for a light blue. And like it to me. So that's pretty nice. And the final thing you want to do on this R layer is give it kind of a third dimension. So we're going to go to Effect, Distort, Sphere Eyes. Uh, the center should be in the dead middle of your mask. And then just take the radius up until it looks normal. So about like that. And you can really see if you turn the effect on and off what it's doing. It looks much cooler in my opinion. So now you're done with your basic blast effect. Uh, and now I'm just going to go ahead and add a couple extra features because while it does look cool, uh, it doesn't give the effect that there's a whole lot of power coming out of it. So. I'm going to first add a new layer. So layer, new, solid. Should be white. Uh, click the make comp size button now. And we'll rename it uh, flicker. So hit F4 to bring up your transfer modes. Uh, and it should be classic color dodge. And hit T to bring up the opacity. Bring it down to zero. And Turn on your keyframe there, and let's go back in time until you can see the blast kind of starting to emerge there. So we're going to have it zero here. Now we're going to use a tool called the Wiggler to add this flickering effect. Uh, Wiggler's right here. If you don't see it, just go Window, the Wiggler. Okay, so you have your two keyframes here. Just select them both, and now you can use the wiggler. Uh, apply to the temporal graph, noise type smooth, dimensions, all independently, and now you have frequency and magnitude. Uh, what the frequency does is it tells you how many times per second uh, the magnitude is going to change. And the magnitude is just how much the opacity will change. So I'm going to tell it to change 20 times in a second, and never more than 20% opaque. And I hit apply. And now it adds all these keyframes here. And if you go through, I'll just go ahead and play it. You can kind of see this flickering here that it gets brighter. Just really gives the the blast itself a little more life, which is what we want. Okay, so now you're done with this composition. There's one more thing we're going to do. Uh, take your blast composition here, drag it down to the new composition button. It's right here, the third from the left. Okay, so now everything you've just done is in one layer. 
which is nice. Uh, and we're going to add a camera shake to this. So with this selected, hit P, turn on your keyframes, and you want, again, you want them in the same place that you just did uh, your last solid. You want one at the end and one right where uh, the beam starts to come out. Okay, select both of them, and it's the exact same thing. I like 20 and 20, but it's a matter of personal preference. Uh, you can do what you want. And then you hit apply, and now the camera shakes, which just gives the blast a feel of more power. Like it's, I don't know, it's just a really nice effect. <laughs> Uh, but the problem is you have these black bars, uh, so we're going to fix that. Go to Effect, Stylize, Motion Tile. Click uh, Mirror Edges here, and then change the output width to 125, output height to 125. Uh, just as long as these numbers are bigger than your magnitude, you're fine. And you can see how it just mirrors the edges there and makes things much less noticeable. And hit F4 to bring up uh, all these properties. We're gonna turn on motion blur. Uh, turn on globally as well. And now you can just see things get a little blurred, which is the point, I guess. Uh, but now you're done. So I'm just gonna do a RAM preview here. So there you go, you just made your first energy blast. Uh, I hope this tutorial uh, really helped you out. I know I had one before, but it was kind of lacking and I forgot to explain everything in full, so I hope I fixed that. Uh, if you notice anything or are confused, feel free to email me at info at underearthstudios.com. I have another tutorial on the way, so keep checking www.underearthstudios.com for that and more tutorials, and go ahead and watch our movies while you're there. Uh, thanks again, I'll see you later.